Hey everybody, I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. I am slowly feeling better. Not tons, but good enough that I intend to go to the gym after after I uh, get done with this morning upload. I probably won't upload this until this evening, to be honest, because I want to get to the gym as quickly as possible. I'm not a good gym patient at all, okay? To tell me to stay out of a gym is very difficult, but I think I can get some therapy in and stuff like that. Um, if you are new to this channel, welcome. We like to sit around and listen to Dave Ramsey telephone calls, kind of chew the straw and muse over them. We hope you will join us. I'm almost always, almost always on here every day. I try to, but uh, the specialty here is usually evening time after work when I do most of my filming. So we hope you will join us. Of course, if you're returning, you are family, you know the routine, kick up your feet, get a blanket, get your tea. Let's find out what's going on. It's a very gloomy day in Tampa. It was gloomy yesterday. It's gloomy again today, but we have each other. All right. So let me go ahead, take this all the way down. Thank you so much for spending part of your Sunday with me here. All right, folks, let's hit it. Brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Christopher is with us in Dallas, Texas. Hi, Christopher. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, Christopher. Dave, I am a fellow believer, so you are brother Dave to me. It is an honor to be on your show today, man. Oh, we're honored to have you, sir. How can we help? All right. I'm 28, married with two under two. I work for a church making 43000 a year take home. We are nearly done with baby step three, and we have enough for our bills, but things are tight. I have a friend and mentor twice my age who is a successful businessman. He knows our financial situation and offered me a business opportunity that he has proved with someone else. He suggests I always caution when someone says they offered me a business opportunity and he's young. So not saying he's naive, but we'll, we'll wait and find out. But I always caution when someone says a business opportunity. Suggested trying it independently or taking a $10,000 investment from him for faster growth a share and profit boom i already say fraud ice cream fraud ice cream fraud just saying I, I i don't trust many of those things uh especially if somebody comes to you it's kind of like if i wasn't looking for it and then someone just miraculously said and if you don't believe me about business opportunities um depending upon your age and stuff, okay, you may or may not know, but remember that scammer, that Wall Street guy, I cannot remember his name right off the bat, and he scammed all those rich people out of money, he was the Wall Street guy, and I think he died in prison, and his wife was in disgrace, and the whole family just, I mean, that one son committed suicide, another one died by cancer, it was god awful, what was his name, I'll think of it later, but you know, th there's just something about I guess my caution would be if it seems too good to too good to be true, it probably is. But it was that big, big scam for that former Wall Street guy. I can't think of his name. I should know his name. I just can't. Ruth, uh, what was their name? The the Madoff. Yes, the Madoff family. M A D O F F. The Madoff family. Scam, scam, scam. And Ruth is now living in, you know, disgrace somewhere. Never shows her face again. I think she's in the Hamptons, I think, or something like that. And God knows when they took a picture for her shopping at Ikea once, I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, they scammed all those people. So I hope he's not getting scammed. I hesitated because of our close relationship, seeing it as a personal loan. And the thought of trying to work hard and fast to make back his investment caused me great anxiety. When, I when your gut instinct, hold on. You guys know I'm still recovering from being sick. just all got to be flexible. Thank you. Um, when it comes to money, your gut hunch, that first gut instinct is usually your right instinct. And if you're like, you know, I, I just don't think it's right, but we go forward with it anyways, right? Kind of like relationships. It's just that gut instinct says no, but we do it anyways. I expressed interest in starting the business without taking his money because of viewing as a personal loan. He got very upset claiming that it was a weak excuse for not wanting to admit that I could make more money on my own. He acted like I was trying to pull one over on him um, and that he was going to call my bluff, but my heart truly did prioritize the relationship over potential business gain. And that's not a real relationship if it's supposed to be based on money anyways. I do not doubt there are scammers out there that will spend years building a relationship with someone 
whether it's for personal gain, like uh, you know, faking a personal relationship or faking a business or faking a personal relationship to try and get a business relationship down the road or to gr- or to try to muscle in on someone's, you know, money down the road. I do not doubt there are people that won't spend years doing that right off the bat. If I had a friend that said to me, Hey, Carrie, borrow 10,000 from me. You can make more money, yada, yada. And I go, no, no, I don't like to borrow money from my friends. I like our friendship just as it is. And then they get pissed right off the bat. I know you were never my friend to begin with. And you only became friends with me to try to get a business relationship out of me. It may be easiest for us to say, we'll just dump that relationship. Okay, but depending upon the dynamics of it, you know, and what you believe that relationship really was, it may be harder said than done. Now, more experienced people in our 50 age bracket, I wouldn't have a problem dumping that at all. I'd be like, no, you really weren't into me. (laughs) So my question is, was I wrong to view the investment as debt? Did I miss out on an opportunity or did I do the right (laughs) thing following my gut? No, no. See, this is where his youth is showing. This is what, but you know, this is how we learn. I mean, look at the mistakes I made in my youth, okay? No, he he absolutely did the right thing. <laughs> I'm not adding anxiety in my life. Is this just a conflict of different ways to use money? Sorry, no, long, this is a butthole. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, what kind of guy is a mentor? Yeah. And then mm-hmm. sets you up to take to get you into something he wants you into and then is mad cuz you won't do it. it ex- exactly. It makes you think he wasn't really mentoring you for the purposes of mentoring you. He saw you as uh, as grooming. You know, that's what they say. And I'm not saying the guy's a pedophile, okay, that the mentor is a pedophile. But that's what pedophiles will do. They can spend years, home, you know, moving in on a family, getting to become Uncle Jack. No offense, no, no, no personal to the jacks out there, okay? And, and getting the family to trust them, they can spend years doing this till the daughter or the son gets to become the age that that sick, sick-ass sick predator wants. And then Uncle Jack is such a trusted person or Auntie Jane, no offense to the Janes out there, okay? Because women do it too, okay? It's just more prevalent than men, but you know we know it goes, you know, the sword knife cuts both ways. No, they can spend years doing it. That's not a mentor. Exactly. <laughs> he violated mentor ethics. That's right. That's a manipulator. Oh, wow. That's what that is. That's someone who's trying to groom someone to be something that they want. That, that, that's, this is sick. That's a manipulative move. Yeah. Big the, time. The relationship, wow. by the way, isn't anywhere near what you think it is. And let me just say, as a guy who I have still have older mentors in my life, and I talk with them regularly... A true mentor, as Dave said, would never react that way. That relationship any, isn't anywhere near what you think it is. And I hate to to tell you that, but you need to be aware of that. Yeah. Right? A true mentor would never do you harm. A true mentor would never expect anything from you. A true mentor sure as heck wouldn't involve money in the relationship. Absolutely not. If it's not a gift, you know. A mentor gives you a hundred dollars because you graduated from college. Okay, you can. Okay, I can bite on that. But a mentor to say, "Hey, take ten thousand from me, work it off for me." Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, that's not a mentor. That that that's a manipulator, and it's he he's stalking he's stalking his next prey and victim. I would take his name off the mentor plaque. Yeah, he gets the the mentor plaque beside his name. We have to take that plaque down. I like that. We have to put up a different plaque that just says uh, "guy who wants money," plaque. Yeah. Um, no, that's not. A, I mean, a mentor wants your best interest at heart and has absolutely zero conflict on their part. I've been a mentor when I was in my twenties. Yeah, yes, during during my sane moments, I was a mentor um, to a gal that was a middle school student, and I loved it. And you know, I would take her to McDonald's and stuff. You know, everything we always did was out in the open. It was in public and all of that stuff. Never in a million years. Now I know she was just a middle school student, but still, never in a million years would I expect her to give me something in return. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, um, and I used to just you know take her around town and you know she she didn't have a mom in her life you know she she lived she lived with her dad she needed kind of that mommy figure and I absolutely loved it and not in a million years I don't care what age she was at you know uh, I could never even think of taking anything from her or or her dad they they just needed somebody to help you know kind of give her that mommy 
aspect. And I was in my late twenties and she was like, you know, 13 years old. And so she and I used to go do, you know, McDonald's and stuff like that. Sometimes I'd take her to the park if she wanted to go there, but that's what a mentor does. She was too young to discuss career and stuff, but we discussed, you know, get your A's and B grades, yada, yada. That's what a mentor does. I mean, at least that's in my mind. And so he was way too emotionally and otherwise invested in you doing this. He was stalking his prey. He was a lion deep in the grass and he was stalking who he thought would be vulnerable. Mark my words, that's what he was doing. Okay. Like, you know, if, I, if I'm if i mentoring someone, which I don't do very often for this exact reason, but, uh, and I, I say, hey, go do this, and they don't go do it, they don't get anything from me, but the next time I get ready to tell them something, I might hesitate. But I'm not going to go, I told you not to do that. You know, um, if they come back and go, you told me not to do that and I screwed this up, okay, learning experience, that's fine. But I'm not, you know, I don't have to search someone down and defend my ego when I'm in the mentor seat. That's, that's wild, man. It's kind of... I think I'm going to cut this off here. I think this uh, young guy, Christopher, I think Christopher dodged a bullet. Yes, I think Christopher dodged a bullet. All right, folks, the gym is calling me. I'm out of here. Um, I will probably upload later today, as long as my energy and spirits keep up with it. All right. I know this was short, but sometimes short and sweet is wonderful, especially when I need to go and work out. People, I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. I would like you to. I would like to thank you for spending part of your Sunday early afternoon with me. I will see you hopefully at the uh, computer deck later on today. Have a great day. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Bye.